A Feast for Crows by George R. R. Martin. The latest Game of Thrones book that I've read. There's another already out after it, but I, I haven't read it yet. So I've officially moved past where I've previously read in Game of Thrones. I'm new to this material outside of watching the TV show. And I have quite a bit of things to say about a Dissa book. I don't know why I turned Italian, but I did. I would say this is both simultaneously my least favorite and my favorite Game of Thrones book, depending how you look at it. George R. R. Martin has continued his incredible character work all the way into Feast for Crows, and Cersei kind of takes the spotlight here when it comes for character realization for me. She has been a major player in this series up until this point, but I feel like she's really shining and really becoming fully realized in A Feast for Crows. Her point of view chapters save this book for me because they are absolutely enthralling. The current political climate around her and the strife she goes through is jaw-droppingly amazing. I love the religious zealot aspect clashing with her oh-so-sinful ways. The stakes are high, it's villain versus villain, which is a phenomenal setup, and every page I was hooked Hookity hooked, hooked, hooked. All that being said, this was the slowest A Song of Ice and Fire. I know I said Game of Thrones earlier. I'm going to keep making that mistake. Get over it. Book, yet yeah, it was slow. It was very slow at times. It had some real high highs, but this point in the series kind of feels like when you're coming down from a bender and you're still having fun with your friends, but you're having like the realization of like... Oh, things are gonna be bad later. That's kind of how I felt reading this. Like, it's still great, there's still a lot of fun, but it kind of felt like the horrific consequences of the terrible things that have happened in the series are taking a toll on the story a little bit. There's less characters, obviously, that you as the reader are heavily invested in. And if those characters happen to be your favorites, you'll be kind of suffering here as a Song of Ice and Fire fan. I am of the opinion he killed off too many characters too quick. I liked the plot lines that were developing with a lot of the people who were murdered in the last couple of books, and well, this is a more focused story now, and the Starks all do very well, including the Snow Stark, who is a Snow, but you don't call him Snark, so Jon Snow, you know what I mean? They all still are developing and becoming their own. Arya's plotline as well was not particularly boring, I did like it, and I found its divergence from the show quite fascinating. Sansa Stark as well is having her own little coming into adulthood plotline no longer under any form of protection or shelter. She is out and kind of lying and becoming different. And if, you know, you've seen the show like me, you know how it's going to kind of result at least to a certain point. But I did find this relationship that's building between her and the most lying, devious person, arguably in Game of Thrones up until this point, to be wonderful. And that's one of the biggest compliments I can give a Song of Ice and Fire up until this point, if you have watched the show, the books are still incredibly engaging. Knowing what's going to happen, even though now they're quite different in a lot of ways, doesn't hurt the overall quality here. Something that is magnificent doesn't really get hurt by just losing the experience of the fresh surprise. I really do believe that. I'll actually go as far as to say that maybe the first time you read A Song of Ice and Fire might be the least enjoyable, because, at least in my experience, I've really enjoyed this reread more than my initial read. I have a greater appreciation for the small character work that's done earlier on, and I think this book had that stand out the strongest. So while the pace suffered, and I found the plots to not progress in a way that I found to be super significant, I still really did like this book for its character work, really focusing on people who previously, I didn't feel were given justice compared to the other levels of character work we've gotten with characters like Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen. In order of, like, ranking, this one simultaneously, like, bookends the whole series for me. Like, there's certain aspects of it that I think are legitimately the best. The Cersei chapters are amazingly well done in terms of suspense and kind of making you want to dig in deeper to this incredible power struggle that's occurring. But there are also just not the largest larger, wider consequences or the feeling of progression and ominousicity that the previous books really had. I don't know why. Maybe I just failed as the reader to really pick up on the feeling of just ominousness coming through, but it just didn't work for me. Even in the Jon Snow stuff, which typically is like the most terrifying, oh, beyond the white wall, it just, that, that for some reason, I just didn't feel the same level of threat 
I have before. Anyway, that's kind of my quickie review of Feast for Crows. I really liked it. It is a very good book, certainly worth your reads, and I have a few fun upcoming videos for you guys, most of them revolving around Wheel of Time. I kind of want to just jump back into that series uh, and cover it a little bit more in depth, uh, a little deeper. I recently did a poll on my Twitter, link down below if you want to follow me, to see which one I should do first, and the poll is not over, though it does look like I will be doing one of the videos because it has a slight lead, slight, a slight lead, but though it could still be swayed. I'm waiting for it to be officially done. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here, and have a good one, y'all. Peace!